Are you having fun? Seriously. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Try moving books into a new house with horses. My name is Payana, I'm a book obsessed metalhead and welcome to my channel and also welcome to my new setup. I am currently in the process of moving house and this is my new official private library and I'm super proud of it. I was scrolling through the book related news yesterday. This guy telling me that I should give away all my books and that nobody should have big book collections and big libraries because it's all useless and superfluous and blah and blah. So this is a debate which comes back quite regularly in the book world and I've talked about this before on my channel. So back in 2018, I think it was, I made a video about Marie Kondo uh, on one of her programs told a person to get rid of their book collection and this sparked fury on the internet. I had made a video about that back in the day. I also have one about bibliophiles versus bibliomaniacs and like the difference between those two things. So I thought that I would give my definitive two cents, I guess, on this issue, how I personally feel about it and my personal advice when it comes to owning a book collection that's over a thousand strong. So just to touch back on Marie Kondo for a second. So Marie Kondo is uh, all about interior design, interior harmonious interiors, feng shui, decluttering your life space. And that's something I actually really agree with. And as somebody who has a lot of mental health issues, it does really help to be in a, an environment that is free from mess and clutter, it really does help. But her specific advice, I'll see if I can find the clip from the show and put it up so you can see what I'm talking about. But she, like in my, my reading of this, this person had a book collection that they weren't the type of person who like curated a book collection. It just seemed to me like they read books and then just put them on a shelf and didn't really care about them. Like if they were just there uh, for somewhere to put them and not, a collection that was specifically curated and they didn't really need to be there. And if getting rid of that is gonna help with decluttering, then I'm not mad about it. I didn't read it as her saying, like telling people who have big book collections that they care about, that they curate to get rid of them. It felt more like if you have a book collection and you don't really care about it and it's not really there for any reason, it's just there as a place to put the books that you've read, then getting rid of them is not a problem. I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but like to me, I wasn't mad about it. But the article I read was extremely specific, like it was basically addressing everybody and saying, oh, you, you need to get rid of your books, don't keep them, ever regardless of situations, regardless of circumstances, just don't keep them. Um, yeah. And this to me felt like it was, it was just like, oh, read a book, enjoy it, and then get rid of it. You don't need to keep it. But yeah, well, some of us do. And this is where it's really important to understand the difference between bibliophiles and bibliomaniacs, because we often talk about bibliophiles as, oh, these are people who read lots of books. But there is a difference between a bibliophile and a bibliomaniac. So a bibliophile is somebody, these are people who go to the library. These are people who enjoy reading, but that don't have any emotional attachment to their, to their books. And therefore they don't have any issues with just reading a book and then, you know, just taking them back to the library, just getting rid of them, giving them to a charity shop, whatever. They don't have an emotional attachment to them. Bibliomaniacs are people like me who end up with book collections that look like this because we care. We have emotional attachments to the books that we read and we keep them for specific reasons. Every single book here 
is here for a reason. Uh, especially books with very positive memories attached to them. All the ones that I loved, I will definitely keep and cherish forever. The ones that I have shared amazing moments with in my life, the ones that were there for me when I needed them the most, the ones that got me through hard times, the ones that feel like friends, that make up for the fact that I don't actually have any friends. What was I talking about? I had the opportunity to go through my entire book collection and decide which books are going to stay, which ones are going. And there's four bags of books in the corridor right now waiting to be donated to the charity shop because I don't need them. So I don't have a problem with getting rid of books if I don't need them, if they're not books that I have a positive feeling towards, if I don't feel like they belong in my collection. I don't have a problem with giving them away. So the points that came up in this article were, well, that, that having a big book collection that was, oh, well, we all want the library that's in Beauty and the Beast, Belle's wonderful library in the Beast Castle. There it is. That book exists, it's called Belle's Library. Yeah, I feel strongly about this. So his argument was that we don't all live in a castle and have the room to have such a collection and obviously this is something you need to take into consideration if you are considering getting a big book collection like this you need somewhere to put it because it does end up taking up quite a lot of room so i'm lucky that i live in a big house so i have this room is just for me and my boyfriend's got his own room for, for putting his own stuff in so we can like both do our thing in our own personal space uh, that the other one doesn't have a say over what goes on in it so obviously that's a luxury not everybody gets to have that so and my giant book collection as I said it takes up a lot of room it has been a problem uh, between me and my boyfriend because as I said we share a house we share a living space so obviously like if I decide to put up a bunch of shelves and have a giant book collection it's gonna take up space that maybe he'd want to use for something else like it's a lot of space so this is something that needs to be taken into consideration where are you gonna put the books and is it okay with everybody living in the house that they that, that they take up the space that they need to take up another point was moving house so i've just finished i've just moved everything in i'm also quite lucky in the sense that i don't have a time limit on when i have to move in because like i own this house um i don't have a time limit on the time it's gonna take for me to like move in here and leave our old house so i had a lot of time to kind of move all of this in Put, put everything in bags. I like using these big, you know, shopping bags, bags for life and filling them up with books and taking them and, you know, just bringing them in. It took about a week to bring everything over to get everything sorted out and put it all in place. Books are heavy, uh, especially when there's a lot of them. Somebody needs to carry them. So I'm quite strong. It's not a problem for me. But again, this is something that needs to be taken into consideration. It's a lot of stuff to move. It's a lot of weight. We've moved house twice now with my book collection. So it wasn't as big as this last time we moved. But my boyfriend was very clear. He was like, I am not touching your books. You are sorting yourself out with them, which I don't mind. Uh, but yeah, that's something else that needs to be taken into account. Uh, moving house. I want to also t tell this story because I used to actually work in bookshops and this guy came in one day and he, he told me that he used to be like me, he used to have a massive book collection, he was a bibliomaniac, uh, he was so attached to his book collection which he said was about 3,000 strong and one day his daughter gave him an ebook or an ebook reader, like a Kindle. And he said that from that day on, he only read books. Like he only read ebooks. And he wasn't interested in having physical books anymore. So he donated them all to the library. Uh, also, he was moving house and he didn't really want to move. He was like getting on a bit. Uh, he was in his mid 50s at this point. He didn't want to go through moving house with a 300, uh, 3000 book strong 
collection. Uh, so he donated it all to the library and made the transition between physical books to ebooks. Feelings and attitudes towards book can change over a person's lifetime. It's not like fixed in time. So this man was like 100% I'm all about ebooks now. I never want to see a physical copy of a book again. Ah! Just it goes to show that all book like reading mediums have a place uh, depending on the person. Personally, I'm still a physical uh, book kind of girl. I can't, I can't read on a screen. Like I've tried, I have <laughs> in the past. It's yeah, it's not for me. Not yet. Anyway, I do also think it's important to like go over your, I mean, I do this quite regularly. I do this pretty much everything I own, like not just my book collection. I do just kind of go through my stuff and just think the, with the whole decluttering thing in mind, do I need this stuff in my house? And it, this is something that I think applies to everything, you know, books, clothes. Do I wear all the clothes that I have? Do I need to keep them? Uh, do I need all the stuff? <laughs> because we own just stuff. Do we need it? If so, uh, if not, it can go to the charity shop. So yeah, I do believe in decluttering. I do believe in having a harmonious interior. Personally, I am super, super pleased with this room. Like it's not finished yet. I still have some stuff to sort out, but so far I'm super pleased with this. It gives me immense joy and happiness. It brings fulfillment to my life. So no, I'm not gonna give away all my books because this article told me to. Like people own, people have book collections for a reason. So yeah, I guess my final piece of advice would be give meaning to it, give reason to it. If it means something to you, if it brings you happiness, indulge. If I could say something directly to the author of this article, I would say it's not because you feel one specific way about something that everybody else needs to feel the same way like we are all different with different drives and motivations and passions and goals in life please keep that in mind before you write articles like this so that's it uh, for this subject at least for now i guess i'll revisit it the next time one of these articles comes on my radar but yeah that's my definitive thoughts on the subject uh, at least uh, at this present moment. If you want to watch my original video on Marie Kondo, I'll link uh, that one and the one about uh, Bibliophiles and Bibliomaniacs in the description, or I'll put them up here somewhere, I guess. Well, yeah. I wanted to put this giant poster of Avantasia I had. I got this with the new, when I bought the, the, the latest album, a paranormal evening with the Moonflower Society and I wanted to put it on the wall but I did it's so big I didn't have enough room for it so I put it on the door instead yeah this is the this is the thing I I, I got kind of panicky when I received this I thought that I'd made a mistake and that I bought the vinyl instead because last time I bought a double CD it was uh, it was one of um Power Wolf's albums and it was it was like normal CD size like it was it was like double CD with an art book, but it was like normal CD size. And I was like, did I make a mistake? Did I buy the vinyl <laughs> instead? Um, Cause I don't normally buy vinyls. Um, I'm a CD kind of girl, but like, <laughs> this is beautiful though. I really love this. Like I managed to get the, like it's, it's all to be a summit, like explaining how he wrote the album and it's got these beautiful no that's not one of them there we go there's beautiful illustrations uh with all the song lyrics look at that very victorian uh in in the rain gothic graveyard uh stuff i love it i love i love avantasia i love the i love the feeling of it and this album in particular it felt like i had the same feeling listening to this that i got when i read uh the night circus by erin morgenstern it really has the same magical whimsical feel to it so this is definitely a Kate Blanchett level band. It's actually, this is one of the bands that I recommended in the uh, Kate Blanchett video. For metal beginners, uh, it's very safe to listen to and I very, very strongly recommend this album. A Paranormal Evening with the Moonflower Society by Avantasia. Go give it a spin.
that's it for this video thank you so much for watching don't hesitate to leave a comment tell me your thoughts do you, are you more of a i want to keep my books forever and cherish them and love them type of person or are you more the type of person who will just happily give them away tell me what you think tell me tell me where you are on this spectrum in the comment section in the meantime i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time Mwah.